you want me to look which works best for you? Some Whatever, people, you know. Yeah, some people like looking at the camera, some people yeah. don't. Look at me, talk okay. to me. Yeah, I'll keep okay. the camera low. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and you are? I'm Kristen Farrell. I'm from uh, Los Angeles, originally from Kansas, but just recently transplanted in Huntington Beach, California. And we are in Cannes right now. All right. What are you doing in Cannes? The Fusion 5 Festival with Strict 9, Strict 9 Gallery. Okay. Uh, how long have you been represented by Strict 9? I think we're going on, wow, is it? Three years, maybe. Yeah, I was there. I was one of the first, one of the earlier artists that they started. Work, like, kind of a little closer to the beginning. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I've been working with them for a while. I love them. Yeah. Amazing. I, best thing that ever happened to me. There. How did, did they find you, or did you find them? Um, I have a, a clothing line based on um, t-shirts, mainly girls' apparel, accessories, whatnot. That um, that's based on my artwork, like the illustrations. Like, I take my artwork and put it into illustrations, yeah. put it on clothing, and. Um, and I do the uh, trade shows in Vegas, the magic trade shows, um, twice a year. And one of uh, Yasha's, one of her girls from the gallery stumbled upon my line and it just, they found me and we fell in love and beautiful things happened from right. that, yeah. Right. All right, so tell us about your art. What sets it apart from other artists? Oh. Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> I just started right <laughs> off the bat. Um, I'm... <laughs> um, I don't, I, my art, um, well, what I do, and I don't know so much what sets it apart, but what I do, I work um, really heavily in classic symbolism. Yes. I really love all of those old religious paintings to wear that were created back when the when the when the mass was, you know, the common man was was illiterate. And so, in the order to tell stories, they use these paintings, and everything in the painting is symbolic. I mean, like, from the animals to the fruit to the poses that the people have, they all had their own specific meaning to where, but the symbols were all universal, they were all known, and so, in the same way that symbols today are known, like, when you see, like, red lips, you know that that's a sexy symbol, you know, I mean, it's, it was the same way back then, and so they told their stories through these pictures, through the symbols in their pictures, and I always loved that, how it's like a puzzle and if you know the meanings you can read the story and that's kind of how I I've taken taken that and I use those symbols and really heavily in my work to where I do a lot of research with images and like with animals flowers plants like poses positions of like you know what those meant back historically but I just put it in modern terms to where I use those symbols to um, to tell stories about just experiences and frustrations in my own life. I was a single mom for a long time, um, very poor single mom, you know, food stamp kind of struggling and through divorce and dealing with um, people I cared about and their like alcohol drug addictions, how that affected my life. I mean, all of these things that are very, are very common, you know, very common struggles that people go through, but I just use that classic symbolism to tell these stories in more modern terms. Yeah. And when I look at your art, it's got sort of a cartoony mm -hmm. effect to it. Mm -hmm. How does that, that sort of more modern, sort of, let's say, edgy look interact with the more classic style that you're going for? That's, um, that's one of the things that um, I think makes it more fun, you know, makes mm -hmm. it a little more... A little more inviting to the viewer. I mean, it puts like a little bit of a because the imagery that I use and specific symbols and what I do with them, like they're a little more uh, macabre and a little more harsh and gory. Mm -hmm. But with all the light colors and the lighter visual effect of it, you know, I mean, it's a little like you said, a little more cartoony. I it lightens it a little bit and makes it a little more pleasing to the eye. So you have that juxtaposition of the pretty cute you know, right. sweet images with the blood and the gore and it 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 makes it a little more visually friendly. Okay. Instead of just being so dark and right. bleh, yeah. Do you think these are your images sort of tell things that the common man, the common person 
can relate to? Is it, are they sort of these, you're talking about the mass and how, you know, when people, most people are illiterate, they relied on these images. Mm -hmm. If that were still the case today, would mm -hmm. your images be the sort of messages that reflect modern society? I, I think, I mean, like with, this, with the little stories that I'm telling in these, in these paintings, they are stories more about just, you know, common, common struggles. I don't know how easily or specifically the stories are read like because a lot of the symbols that I use are so you know they're from they're from history so I don't know if they're easily read but the only thing that's I don't need for people to be able to know the specific story right. that it's that that I'm trying to relay it's it's a general feeling that you get from it like if you look at a certain piece and it just kind of it just reeks of loneliness or it reeks of you know just desperation or whatever as long as they kind of catch that general feel and you know are those common know, themes for you yeah yeah they are uh, yeah i mean it's i don't paint about happy things that's not inspiring to me it's my work it's very cathartic for me it's how i I'm not good. Very. I'm not very good at talking about feelings or venting it in any other healthy way. And so I get all of the ick in my head out through the artwork. And so I can function and be happy in my normal waking life. And um, so yeah, all of like all of the stuff that my work is about is all like the themes are all very dark and sad and you know just frustration themes. But you seem like a pretty peppy person. It's because I make the art I do. <laughs> if I didn't make so it, it's cathartic for you. Very, yeah. yeah. It's, it's how I stay sane. It's okay. how I'm able to be happy and be productive in my life and be a productive, healthy mother and function. It's because I can get all this shit in my head out and not have it spewing into unhealthy territory, you know, so right, I don't right. take it out on my child or take it out on, you know, my husband or my friends or, you know, or self-destruct with it. Okay. Yeah. Does being a mother influence your art? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and a lot of the themes, it's, I do a lot of work about being a mom because especially, especially when I was a single mother, when I, because I went through the, I had my son when I was, um, I got pregnant when I was 21 immediately married and very quickly divorced after that and so it was I did the whole working three jobs putting myself through college and raising a child and there's a lot of frustration especially being young as having a child and all that responsibility when everyone else your age is running around getting dressed so I mean in order to not build resentments towards my child because of my own decisions that I had made in my life in order to be able to get through all of that I had to I had to vent all of those frustrations out in, in my art so that I, so it was gone, you know, and that, so a lot of it is about, you know, about motherhood and just, just all, all the emotional crap that goes along with that, yeah. So you're a full-time artist now, yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell me about that transition from the working three jobs, from, I guess, struggling a little bit to, you know, being able to make your money and your livelihood just on your just art? Just with art, yeah. it's, uh, it's a wonderful transition. It's yeah. so it's so much happier now. Um, but no, it just takes a lot of. You just have to have to be like so dedicated. I mean, and just really not give a shit about what anyone else says or any of the. You know, you, you just have to work at it. And I mean, it's like you know, work with three jobs down to two jobs down to what you know. While would where I work all day and at night went home and worked until you know four in the morning on the art and then. You just have to keep going and chipping away, and, and it just was a slow. It was a slow build, you know, to where you work and do a little bit of art, and then it slowly that 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 scale tips to where, yeah, the, I don't know. It's, it's more you. I can't. I'm babbling. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Huh? But um, but yeah, I mean, it's just the more you put into something that you care about, the more it's going to benefit you. And I just found. It's right. that dedication that made it happen, 